we're in Photoshop. We've set up our artboard to be 8 by 10 inches by 350 pixels per inch filled with the white background. That's all we have right now. We are in the window settings for the workspace and we're on the essentials, the default. Hopefully all of you are on that so that you can definitely see layers. This is the only thing that really matters for this assignment, being able to see layers. The other thing that's helpful is the rulers, which you find under view and rulers. And command R is the shortcut. So you want those rulers turned on when you use Photoshop. And it will show you 8 by 10. And then it will also show you at the bottom 8 by 10 by 350 pixels per inch. Why does Photoshop spend so much energy to show you your resolution? It's because if you start a project at the wrong resolution, you're stuck. Right? So if you're required to do a job that's for a poster that's 17 inches by 22 inches, and you start it at only 100 pixels per inch, you're not going to be able to use that poster. It's better to have too much resolution than too little in terms of print quality. So we are designing this to be printed at 8 by 10, and that means it's going to look really good on a screen, even if you zoom in. To add content, I'm doing a Hawaiian shirt theme, so I might as well bring on my Hawaiian shirt. And all I do, just like bringing a cutout from my desk onto my taped artboard physically at home, I just drag and drop it in. As soon as you drag and drop it, it gives you what's called a placement box. A placement box is outlined with blue with those little squares, but it has an X in it. It's a placement box because you can't do anything else until you've hit return, until you've placed it. The little dots allow you to shrink it, or if you click outside of the dots, you can rotate it. Remember, nothing outside of your artboard will print, so you want to shrink it so it's onto the artboard, but not too small because you want it to look good. And you can always adjust this after the fact, too. And then you hit return because you can't do anything else until you hit return. You will see that now we don't just have a background, we have a layer on top of that background. And we have an eyeball next to that which can turn it off and on. When I click on the background, you'll see how it highlights gray. That means that the background is now selected. When I have the background selected, I cannot change another layer. I can only affect the layer that's selected. If I want to get to that box again to change it, it's no longer a placement box. It's going to be what's called a transform box. And that is under edit and transform. These transform tools are incredibly limiting. So instead, what we do is free transform. And the shortcut for that is what? Command T. So that's one we're going to use a ton. So I'm going to click on this layer and then hit Command T. And I get what looks like a placement box, right? And it has all those same functionalities. So let's go through all of them. I can stretch it. I can rotate it. If I right click within it, you get all the other options. My favorite of which is warping it, which makes kind of a, a nine square grid that you can pull at the edges like it's chicken wire and change the shape. So if I want that shirt to look a little bit more free flowing, less stiff, I can do a little tuggy tug. That sounds really bad. So the problem is now I'm on warp. If I want to just grow the whole thing, I have to hit return and then hit command T again. Or I have to right click and say scale. So we're going to learn all of these. But Command T gets us back to this at any time. And then you hit Return. And then if you don't like what you did to it, you can always hit Command Z, and that will take you back in your history. A great thing about Photoshop is your history is right here in default settings. So if you click on it, you can see all the things you did, and you can take it to any step along the way. All right. Now I'm going to bring on one more. I'm going to bring on this potted plant. And I'm going to hit return to place it. Notice what just happened. Because it, it worries some students. When I bring it on, how does that line art look? Looks low quality. Looks really fuzzy. That's because this is just, what's the term? Um, it's not set yet. You haven't placed it. Until you hit return with the placement, 
it's not actually committing those pixels to Photoshop's memory. So it's just previewing the file. So no matter how great a quality file it is, and we want it all a thousand by a thousand pixels or more, until you hit return, it's not going to be clean. Okay? Now here's the next thing. The problem is I have the layer on top of this layer. But that layer not only had line art, it also had the white pixels. Because we did a screen grab, right? So how do I get rid of those whites? I'll show you multiple ways as we finish this. But for right now, we just don't want to see the white. So what we're going to do is change what's called the blending mode of that layer. So where it says normal, we're going to change it to multiply. Multiply darkens as it goes. So white will affect nothing. And then blue, it's actually going to be uh, adding the blue to the black. And we're eventually going to change that blue into black as well. You'll see. At this stage, I want us all to save our work. I know I don't have all my images in yet, but we want to save the work because as long as it's untitled, that means if we have a power outage, if the internet goes out and you're using Photopea, if you walk away from your computer and you forget and it runs out of your battery, I'm going to lose all of that. So in order to save your work in Photoshop, you need to give it a title. And because this is a professional class in a studio environment, you are not allowed to title it whatever you want. So we're not going to have like cat fake 96 file one. Instead, you're going to always name your files with your name and then whatever description you want. And that's so if they ever get misplaced, we can just search your name on that computer. All right. So organization is key in lots of ways. So we're going to save it. We go to file and we go to save as. You're always safe going to save as because that's when you get to name the file. It's when you get to set the file format. You get to set where it saves. And we're going to do two things. This is complicated, but it's worth it. This is what the creative, the creative cloud Adobe account is all about. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to type in our name. And then we're going to type in, just with words, try to limit your symbols, because not all symbols are universally supported. But dashes are. So I'm going to say Carl Exercise 1. And then I'm going to say Line Art Jumble. That's just how I'm choosing to describe it. As long as you have your name, you're meeting my requirements. But it's good to put Exercise 1 in there too. Okay, what do you think I do now? What is it wanting me to do? What's the blue button say? Not your question. <laughs> it wants me to say it. But if I click this right now, I want to be aware of where it's saving to. And so right now, this is going to save um, to the creative cloud, not to my computer. So if I do save, this is only from Photoshop. OK, now I always want you to save it in both places at the end of the class, to your cloud account in Adobe and onto this computer. So now I get to practice that again. File, save as. And this time, I want to click Save on my computer. Bless you. So they have this little pop-up after you've saved it once, reminding you, we really want you to save it to the cloud. We've already done that, so now I'm going to save it to the computer. When you save it to the computer, you're going to pick a location. The desktop is good. If it says anything else, you can always hit Command-D, and it will navigate you back to the desktop. And then the format you want is a Photoshop format. We're going to learn all about these. And it's going to add this tag to your file, which is important. Let it add that tag. Don't miss with those tags. It will say .psd after. So then we say save. So now we also have it saved to our desktop. It's right here. I'm going to right click and mark that with a, uh, with a green. That means that's the file I want to work from. As long as you save it as a PSD file, you're good. You won't have lost your work. OK, now that I've done that, I can show you how to do that in PhotoP, which are in the directions and if you want to work at it at home. I'm going to show you one better. So this is how I would do that. I would throw the things in. You'll see you get the same kind of placement box. I can do it with multiple ones. Hit return, and then I'm going to say file, 
save as PSD. So the reason PSD matters so much is it stands for Photoshop document. Unless you save it as a PSD, you won't have those individual layers when you open it. It will flatten them, okay? Making your life much harder. So I say, in photo P, I say save as a PSD. And then I give it my name, and I say uh, exercise one, and I need to change the name so it doesn't overwrite my other one, and I'm going to call it uh, photo P test. And I'm going to save it where? To the desktop, right? So how do I get to the desktop from a search window like this? I could do all this and find it, or I can just very simply hit Command D, and that will always never get you to the desktop. So Command D is a great shortcut for that. Then I'm going to hit Save. And then, okay, so now if I close Photopea, I saved it, it's on the desktop. Let me close it. Let's see, you don't even need to sign into Photopea or anything. And then if I open it again, and I take that PSD that I saved, it doesn't matter if it's the one from Photoshop, which is here, or the one that was my photo P test from here. If I drag it in, it's going to open it and read it just like whatever I was working on, right? And I can keep adding to it, like I can add the next thing, and I can place it and rotate it and do all that stuff, hit return, and now I'm going to save it as a PSD, right? And it's going to keep my original name and it's going to save to the desktop and it's going to ask, do I want to replace the original file? And yeah, I want to replace it. So then when I come to class again and I click on that PSD that I have kept in my email or however I want to move my files or have it on my thumb drive, when I open it up in Photoshop, it will have that new element in it. And it looks like we're going to have to clear that each time. And then if I view it under the workspace, which is Essentials, I'll see my layers, and I'll have that new layer there. And it's all good to go. Okay, now here's the problem. Your desktop looks messy. We've got no time left. So this is what we're going to do. You're going to right-click on the desktop, and you're going to make a new folder, and you're just going to write your name very clearly. We will retitle it in a bit. Then I want you to grab everything you did today, all that mess that's on the desktop that you created, and move it into that folder, and then just leave that folder on the desktop. It won't live there, but that will remind us where our stuff is. If there's anything you want to work on after class, make it available to you through a thumb drive or through your email. The PSD document is the thing that has all the assets in it. That is it.